Hello folks, Pastor Rocky Branch. Hope you're doing great today. Well, I've been gone out of the office for a few days, but I've been coming to you by way of my telephone, but I'm glad to be back here in the office. And I want to let you know this morning on Sunday, it's early on Sunday, and it's not a bad morning at all. It's not very cool, which we, I can say thank God for that. But you know, as you make decisions, you have to understand and remember at least that life as we live it is getting shorter because we're living you know each day so that's a day off of our lives we're getting older and then what we do with our lives are so important i saw a dear sister yesterday a dear saint in the nursing home they call her granny g and she has been such a great inspiration and she has fought and fought and fought and i mean for multiple days without water without food she has just she has fought and fought that body just keeps on fighting, not wanting to give up. Her family gathered around, been very faithful. You know, it's a challenging thing when you look at loved ones, and there they are sick and weary and tired. I have a, a precious friend. Her father was over in Asheville, and he's, he's getting ready to graduate into glory, and she's brokenhearted about it. She has strong faith. It's not a faith issue. She believes, and she knows, and I've talked to the man, and he's, he's a Christian. He's ready to go, but that's not the issue. Just like this dear sister, Granny G, she's ready to go as well. That's, that's not the issue. It's the breakdown of the body. It's the breakdown of the heart, the soul, the mind, how we get so weary and tired when we watch people that we love suffer. And we want to relieve them of it. We want to get in there if possible and try to help them. You know, life is a cruel thing. It, it comes against us. It works against us. Our bodies hurt. We get older. Our hair changes. And our eyes get weak. And as we move along through life, we're to be reminded that this is not the final resting place. This is not the final stop. This is not where we're going to be forever. And, and I really need to understand that, you know, when I pick up my glasses here and I, I put my glasses on, well, I do that because I can see the camera better. And that helps me because my eyes are not like they used to be. Well, of course, life changes, and life changes for everyone. But here's the thing that's very important. God doesn't change, number one, and the decision process needs to be strong in your life for you. Now, you can talk about what somebody else is doing if you want to, and you can get wrapped up in that, and you can say, well, you know, if so-and-so can do that, I can do it. Listen, let me tell you. Don't worry about so-and-so. I mean, you ought to pray for them, love them, care for them as far as that goes, but don't worry about them to the degree that it puts you in a position that you're not helping yourself because you need to understand, I need to understand that we are going to stand before God and we are going to give an account of our life and we are getting older and more weary. We are not able to do what we once did and life brings that to us. Now, I have had... In these almost 35 years of ministry, I've had funerals, I call them memorial services, for a number of different aged people. I've had them for babies, uh, stillborns, newborns. I've had them for teenagers, small children, eight, nine years old. I've had them for young teens, middle teens, older teens, in the 20s, 30s, 40s, all the way up to 100 uh, years old have I done memorial services for because everybody dies. And when you get in this state of when you look at someone and you say, wow, I, I really wish that grandmother, I really wish that grandfather, really wish dad or mom or whatever the case may be would not have to go through this. This is the plight of life. This is what life is about. That's why Jesus said, I ha have come to give you abundant life. Jesus says, I have come to help you. Now listen, I don't want to argue denomination with you. Uh, because that's not my deal. I, I, I'm, I'm not a denominational guy. I try to be a Christian. I try to serve the Lord Jesus Christ and my fellow man and do what I can for them. I don't tell you, I don't want to argue about whether Catholics or Baptists or Methodists or Presbyterian or Lutheran. Who cares about all that? This is what I want to ask you today. Do you understand that you, as an individual, you are going to die? You need to understand that. That's a done deal. I, it doesn't matter whether you're Methodist, Presbyterian, whether you're tree jumper, pew hopper, I, who cares? You're dying. I am dying. We all are going to die. Do you understand that? All right, then what's going to happen? What are you going to do with that? You can say, well, so-and-so, listen, so-and-so is going to die too, and they're going to deal with their self, just like you're going to deal with you, and I'm going to deal with me. What are you going to do? If you want to take the chance to say, well, you know, when I die, there's nothing out there anyway, so it doesn't matter. Listen, why on earth, why on earth would an intelligent person take a chance on something that they could know for sure? Why would you do that? Why would you possibly 
Take a chance on something you can know for sure. Because one of the problems we have with Christianity is that when I admit in a great creator, when I admit in God, then what I have just done is I have made myself accountable. Because that means that God has said certain things are going to happen and I need to abide, abide by those certain things. Well, in this case, in this case, I need to understand. Do I say, well, there's no, there's nothing. I just live my life and die and that's it, really? Well, that, that sounds a bit uh, uh, wasted, doesn't it? I mean, it seems a bit wasted time. E even, even, if, even if there was nothing, there would be a, a moral sense to do the right thing, although we do know there is not only just something, there is a great, great, great victory for those that trust in Christ. And, and people have said to me, well, why Jesus? I mean, you know, they get back on the religion thing. Why Jesus? You got Buddha, you got uh, Confucius, you got Mohammed, you got, uh, you got uh, the Catholics, you got the Baptists. Uh, you know, you got all these people that say that they, that they do all this stuff. Why Jesus? Listen. Among the, among the people that rule the various religious causes, Jesus is the only person that ever got up after he died and resurrected, which is living proof of that. He's the only man that ever lived. And I want you to really put this on the end of your ears. He's the only man that ever lived that did not have an earthly father. The only man. God created Adam. And from Adam's loins came every man right down through the same way. The woman had the baby right on down through. The, but the man injected into the woman the blood. Uh, and as a result of that, everybody's been birthed. The way you got here, the way I got here, the way your kids, my kids, our kids. That's the way everybody got here, through an earthly dad. Jesus is the only person that had a miraculous birth by the Virgin Mary. Jesus is the only suitable sacrifice for your sins to be forgiven. Jesus Christ. Not the Baptist Church, Methodist Church, Catholic Church, not Buddhist, Confucius, not Hare Krishna, not Mo Muslims. Jesus is the only way. Now, I, I don't want you to go to the end of your life and become uh, fighting for your life like Miss Granny G in the nursing facility, laying there laboring for breath, because that's, where, that's what life is going to happen. That's where we're going, because this life has been condemned. When Adam sinned, he condemned the earth uh, and the flesh that was on the earth. The Bible is very clear about that in Genesis uh, chapter 3 and then chapter 5 when Adam died. But here's the key. You're going to get at some point, whether one of those people that I mentioned, whether it's newborn, whether it's a kid, whether it's an early teen in the 20s, uh, 30s, 40s, up to 100, somewhere along that line, you're going to be in this place. You're going to have to make this choice because you're going to die and I'm going to die. And I am going to tell you that there's peace that passeth all understanding where Jesus is. Now, this is what I want to challenge you to do. You examine yourself, make sure you're right with God. Because as, at, a, at any point, something could happen that could be fatal for you. Now, you can call me. Uh, you, can, you can send me a message on Facebook or YouTube. And I'll get a hold of you if you give me the way to do it. And we'll talk as long as it takes to talk. Because I want you okay. And many of you I don't even know. That doesn't matter. I want you okay because one of these days... This thing's going to be done. So please make sure. Now, when you get right, help somebody else get right. I don't mean right with the world. I don't mean right with I mean right with God in the relationship. And I can help you any way that you'll let me help you. I pray you will. And if you'll do this, I'm telling you, God will bless you for it. God bless you. We love you. And goodbye.